all right how y'all doing welcome back to the channel today I'm gonna go ahead and start building a new video series where I teach you how to build a custom setup that's going to be fast and balanced for the new Craftsman truck model that just released in this latest build so pay attention you might learn something um, this is being made for at the request of a special of a friend of mine that I watch stream on YouTube and Twitch give a shout out to Emily Love or hey or at hey it's Emily Love make sure you check out her stream at some point or, or the past stream she's done she's a very sweet person and does an excellent job behind the wheel so let's go ahead and I'm going to get started here first thing you want to do is you want to set up your your setup fol setups folder to work for you the best you can so you're gonna go into your documents folder iRacing setups you're gonna scroll down to the vehicle that you're going to be building the setups for in this case it's craftsman truck and they got several different versions of it models of it they got the uh, Toyota version the Chevrolet version and of course my favorite the Ford F-150 that's what I use so I'm going to go ahead and open up my Ford F-150 as soon as I scroll down to it. There it is. You simply open up that folder. And inside that folder, this is where all your setups will be stored. What I recommend doing is creating a folder for each season that you're going to be racing. In this case, I've got the 2024 main season. And I just created a new folder in there and I call it 2024 truck main season. And then what I do is I go in inside that folder and then I create a folder for each race in the schedule for the 2024 season. And each folder has a, each race has its own folder because you want to build your setups for a specific race, not necessarily for a specific track. Because July at Daytona is going to be way, way different than Daytona in August. Just because of different weather conditions and track temperatures and so on and the fact that the tracks may deteriorate somewhat although albeit unlikely in an iRacing which are because they're digital but in the real world you would basically make a setup for each specific race so I'm gonna have each race its own separate folder in my main season folder and I'm gonna have them numbered according to what they are in the schedule and you can just go to the iRacing schedule to get these folders and we're gonna be working with Pocono now there is a Excel file I have made available on Emily's Discord that will allow you to go through and track your setup as you're building it. Keep track of your lap times, your tire wear, and that kind of thing so that you can see your setup progress as you, as you make changes to it. So I'm going to go ahead and open that right now. I've already got it open. so Basically I'm going to pull it over here to the side. So you guys, you guys can see it real quick. And here it is. And this particular file is an Excel file. So if you don't have Excel, you'll need to download a program called Open Office, which has a free spreadsheet program in it that will read this file and allow you to uh, make changes to it and whatnot. Now this file is not only a setup log for storing your setup information and the overall results of like your lap times and whatnot, but it also has a built-in setup guide. As you can see here, it shows you how, what the different settings are and they're all kind of color coded as to what setting goes with, with what and over here in the area where you record your information, those two are also color coded to match basically the uh, setup guide here. It tells you about what all the different settings do, how they work, and how to adjust them. And everything that you're going to need to do to your setup is laid out in the order that you need to build it in. Down here along the bottom in these tabs, like the, for instance, the first thing we're going to play with will be our alignment and steering, which will be this page here. Afterwards, we'll work with our air pressures. And unfortunately, I still need to update that and finish that because that's still in in progress but you'll do those on this page the next page is going to be our spring package 
page where we build our spring package for the rear of the truck and for the front of the truck. Once we get that done, we'll move on to our front anti-roll bar or sway bars. Next step will be going to nose weight. Re the step after that will be our cross weight. The step after that will be our arrow and ride heights. After we get the ride heights and arrow part done, we move on to setting our high speed shock settings. And then we move over after our high speed shock settings are taken care of, we will move over to our low speed shock settings. And as you can see here, I have little charts that tell you what each setting does to the, to the car when you make the cha a change to it. For example, if you put more compression or more low speed compression on the left rear shock, it will tighten up your exit. Less compression on the left rear shock will loosen your exit and so on. And it's all laid out exactly what you should need to do in this kind of your, an idea of how to make your changes and whatnot, how to, and where to start from. And once we get our high speed shock settings to do, we'll then go to our track bars and truck arms. And then after you get that all set up, I have a page here for like practice and final testing of your setup where you can record lap times for your practice sessions as well as your tire wear and whether you're running a qualifying setup or if you're running and also the number of laps that you run in your test session because that will all be determined to help you determine your basically figure out what you're going to do for your pit strategy and figure out what how many laps you're going to be able to get out of a set of tires before you need to get tires. So now that we got this all set up and out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and minimize, or go back to the first tab we're going to work with. We start at the beginning, which is going to be tab number one. It's going to be our alignment and steering. And the first thing we need to do is get this temporarily out of the way for the moment. I'll just move it over here. Also, you're going to need my updated version of the MoTeC workbook for the trucks. And I will also make that available on Emily on the Discord as well. Or I'll just put a copy of it in my Google Drive like I did the first time. In fact, I might actually just throw this Excel file in my Google Drive as well and leave a link to it in this video so that you can download it and use it. Now that we got our setup folder set up properly so that we can keep our setups organized and know what race which each setup goes with, now we need to get our iRacing test session set up correctly so that we, when we go to build our setups we have the right weather conditions and track conditions for what we're doing. And the way to do this is you come into the official page in iRacing, go to the Craftsman truck, we're going to go up here to the schedule. And now we're, the next race on the schedule coming up at the time of this recording is Pocono. So we're going to scroll down until we get to Pocono. So the last race we just did was Chicago, Chicago Land. So here's Pocono. Next week they're running the Mid Ohio Sports Car Course, which is a road course. And I'm not a road course racer that's worth a damn, so I'm not even going to bother building a setup for that because I'm not going to run it anyway. So the next oval race is going to be Pocono. So we're going to come over here to drive now. We're going to click on test drive. And that'll pull up your test drive sheet. Now one thing that you're going to need to do, this is very, very, very important, is come up here to where you got your picture of your truck. And yours probably looks different than mine does. Click on it. And then you'll get an option over here on the right side that says disable car damage. We need to make sure this is checked because we want to make sure that the car does not receive any damage in the event we hit something out on the racetrack. Like if we go in the corner, don't turn and we hit the wall because any damage your truck takes from hitting the wall or something like that is going to change the setup and change the way the truck drives because we'll bend stuff, we'll break stuff. The truck will not drive the same and we want to make sure that we eliminate that variable in our setup so that when we go out and drive it, if the truck feels different, it's because of the setup change we made that we're aware of and we know about, 
instead of a change that happened because we goofed and hit the wall and bent something on the truck and have no way to measure exactly how much it changed. So make sure car damage is disabled. The next thing we're going to do is come up here to where the weather is at, click on it, and scroll down to track condition. There will be a generate option here. Uncheck that and then slide your slider bar up to the 50% mark. This means that the track is going to basically be basically in half used condition. It's not going to be fully rubbered in, but it isn't going to be green either. Once you get that done, these settings we just made to your setup test session will not save unless we close out the test drive session and then come back and click the test drive button on the iRacing main screen. And then as soon as we do that, all of our settings for everything will be how we had them before. So when we come in to reload this test session at another time, it will be ready, everything will be set right. Now if you run a different car or do any other changes or something like that, run a different series or a different track, or go back to the Pocono track and click test drive under the drive now, it will erase all those settings. You have to come back in and reset them. Just keep that in mind so that you know what to expect there. And what the first thing you're going to do then is going to click on the test drive button and that will load iRacing so that you can start building your setup. And I'll be back as soon as iRacing loads. Okay, now that we're back in the setup <coughs> session, it's loaded up. We're going to go ahead and go to our garage in iRacing. And it's important to note at this point, if you already have a setup loaded from a race that you've run or whatever, bought or whatever, make sure you save the setup now because we're going to go in and we're going to start playing with stuff. Once you have your setup saved to wherever you want to save it to, come up here to iRacing Setups, click on that button. It'll ask you if you want to save your current setup, click no because you should have already just saved it. Scroll down until we get to Pocono 2021, which, or 2016 rather, which is the example I'm using for building this setup. But basically this setup process I'm doing will work for anything except for super speedways such as Talladega, Daytona, and Atlanta. Those I will make in a separate video series that will be coming shortly as we get closer to those races coming along. So we're going to click on Phoenix 2021, or not Phoenix, but Pocono 2020, or 2016 rather. We're going to click open. And that loads up our setup. Now the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put on some adjustments that I've done that have worked for me very well over the years pretty much anywhere I go. And I always do these adjustments first thing on a setup. As I come down here on the in the garage to the right rear corner of the truck, and I come to the truck arm mount and I'm going to set that to top. Click apply and that'll probably change everything so that it's no longer legal. For now we're just going to leave that be because we're going to go through and reset our ride heights here in a minute because I have a specific ride height that I like to start off at. Now we're going to go over here and we're going to do the same thing with the other truck mount, arm mount. Set that to top click apply and it, everything is all going to be screwed up now although it looks like our ride heights are looking better than they were and they're actually fairly close to where I want to start them at to be honest with you but what I want to do is I want to go through here real quick and I want to set my rear toe I want to zero it out as my starting point, if I can get it to zero. Get it as close to zero as you can get it to start off. Click apply on that and it's still, it, it's not uncommon for after you make a change to something on the setup that when you go to apply it, it will usually jump off of what you had it set on and you have to go back and do it again. All right, so now that we have our truck arm mount set to our starting base point, the next thing we need to do 
is I'm going to go through and I'm going to set all my shocks to my starting point for shocks, which is going to be five. Every shock setting set to five. And this is what we're going to build our setup around initially. We'll come back later and fine tune our shocks to make sure they're working as best as they possibly can for us. But to start off with, just set these all to five. Make sure we got everybody that we didn't miss anybody. There's one there we missed. Another one that got missed. So those are all done. Those are all done. That's all done. And then we're going to come back and we're going to now make some more quick changes. These are basically adjustments that we're going to be using as our starting point to get started off with. And we will adjust these settings again as we go. Now for a track as big as Pocono is, I like to start off by moving my ARB and start off at two and a half inches, as high as I can go with it. And I put my arm asymmetry to minimum, which would basically be zero. I'm gonna unattach my bar for the moment, make sure it's zeroed out other way. Apply it again, reattach. Now that we got it zeroed out, reattach your bar. We're going to set our front spring rates to 7,500 to start. Oh boy, when that thing starts going, it starts going, don't it? And set them to, both to 7,500. And then we're going to come down to our rear springs, set our left rear, or right rear spring to 650. Apply that, and that's probably going to mess a bunch of shit up. We'll go back and check that here in a minute. Then we're going to come over to the left rear spring and move that up to 650 as well. Apply that. Now let's gone through and it screwed a bunch of our shit up so what we got to do now is we got to go through here and make sure everything is back where we want it to start at so we're going to come down here to our tr truck arm preload and right now it's bitching it's too low so we got to raise it up and you want this and when you start changing stuff in the setup as you're building it this truck arm preload is going to go all over the damn place it's going to go to really really high numbers really really low numbers and it'll oftentimes be not passing tech when that happens you just come down here and just use the arrows to go whatever direction you need to go higher or lower until you get the truck arm preload as close to zero as you can get it without being a negative number Right now it's at negative three, so we'll go up one. That puts us at positive 1.4, and that's where we're gonna leave that for now. We got a few other things we gotta throw in the setup here to get it to our baseline, and then we should be ready to go out and start running our preliminary lap to get our offset set, because that's gonna be the next thing we set is our offset. That'll be the first real adjustment we make. So let's go ahead and get our baseline put together here. And I'm going to go to the left. I'm going to start on the left rear. And I'm going to put the left rear cam camber at negative 1.5. <coughs> Apply that. The right, the left rear camber, we're going to put at positive 1.5. Apply that. And you see our preload changed a little bit, it looks like. But right now we're not going to worry about that. We'll go through and do this. We'll go through and double check it all once we get everything where we want it. We're going to come up here to our front toe end. We're going to set that to zero on both sides. And it looks like it's already there. Yep. Good deal. Make sure everything's all good to go. Make sure our rear cambers are still the same. Because as you change stuff, sh 
shit will change dramatically in some cases. Other things, you change something and nothing else changes. All right, then we're going to go up here and we're going to set our preliminary caster setting. Now, I like to start my caster out at 10 degrees on the right front. And this is going to be by personal preference. Generally, the general rule of caster is, is you want your total caster, which is your right side and left side caster, to generally be as high as possible and still not affect your toe in. But I like to run a little bit of split on everything except super speedways. So I'm going to set my front caster on the left side to 8 and I'm going to set the right side to 10. What this does is it gives me 18 degrees of total caster. And I want to, one thing I'll do now is I want to try to put some toe in on the right front wheel and see if it'll let me do it. If it does, then our, cam, our caster on the right front is good. If it does not let you do any toe in, you have your caster on the right front too high and you have to drop it down until you get it to the point where you can put toe in in the car. Let me show you, show you what I'm talking about. Right now we've got 10 degrees and it's at 132nd. And if we go up to say 10.6, you see how it jumped back to 0 30 seconds? And we can still go up. Now if we jump up to 11 and apply it, it's still letting us have toe. But a lot of times when you get up real high like this, it will take you down to negative 2 30 seconds and you can't go past 0 30 seconds. So I'm going to put this back how I had it, which was 10. And that 10 is, for me anyway, is a good starting point. This may work for you, it may not. You can try it, but if not, I will show, talk more about how to fine tune your caster to your liking here in just a moment. <laughs> the first thing I gotta do is zero out my toe. on both sides. Make sure my preload didn't change, which it of course did. And we're going to set that down to zero. Apply that. Make sure our cambers or our casters are still set where we want them, and they are. Our right heights are all fucked up now, but that's fine. We're going to, this is now screaming it's too low, which is not surprising. So we're going to bump this back up to as close to zero as we can get without being negative. Good. All right, we've got our rear camber set. Our rear track bars, I'm going to set those to 10 to start off with. Zero out my rear toe good apply make sure everything is happy and we're going to come up here and we're going to set our camber for the right front and i like setting my right front camber at to start off with negative 2.5 degrees and on the left front i'm not going to care about the right or the, the left front camber because the left front wheel, basically the only purpose of the left front wheel is to hold the car up off the ground so that you ain't dragging the front end around the track, around down pit road when you're trying to get back out on the racetrack. Once you get on the racetrack and start going through the corners, that left front tire does relatively nothing other than maybe spin. <laughs> it doesn't do anything other than just go along for the ride. In fact, if you've ever watched a dirt race, a dirt sprint car, when they're going through the corners, that left front tire will oftentimes come off of the ground long enough to stop spinning, which tells you right there that right left front tire ain't doing a damn thing. So don't worry about the left front camber. There is some adjustments we may use the left front camber for as we get further in the setup building, and we have to work on trying to get our ride heights to pass tech without jumping up too high because we want them to be in a certain spot. We can use the left front camber to fine tune our ride heights on the left front wheel or the left front corner because camber affects ride height. Now right now it says we're too high on the left front. 
And uh, what I want to do is I want to get my right front or my front end ride heights about four and a half or about 4.7 inches. The most we can go is 4.5. So we're going to take these down to 4.5. We might want to unattach our bar because it's probably going to move. Because as you start making ride height changes and stuff like that, it will fuck with this preload. And that will, it'll throw it all off and it makes things get really goofy. So right now we're at 4.7 on the left front. We're 4.5 on the right front. Take that up. And you may have to adjust on it a little bit to get it to where you want it to be. In our case, we want 4.7, and basically we want to get these two numbers as close to each other as we can right now. And it's 47.58, 47.41, so that's pretty close, so we'll leave that there. And we're going to come down to the back side of it and we're going to get the back of it set we're going to set it to 4.9 on both sides we're as close to 4.9 as we can get it and we want both sides to be as close to the same as we can. 4983, 4992, let's go up and see what our fronts are. 4787, this one can come up a little more. 4731, 4787, bounce that down. 4719, 4714, 4631, 4722, 4764, and you will have to experiment around and play around with this to get them to where you need them to be. Let's see what our back looks like just to make sure that those are staying though close. We want 4.9 on them. They're fairly close right now. We'll just bounce that one down one, bounce that one down one. That should put them fairly close, more or less. Uh, looks like that's going to be as close as they get to each other. 4702, 4728, 4700, 4720, 4717. So those are basically where we want them right now. 40, where they're fairly close to each other and they're around 4.7 and some change. 4.9. So we've got the rear and the front ride height initial settings set. Now we gotta go through here and adjust our truck arm preload because right now it's screaming it's too high. All right, we're at three, which is just as close to zero as we can get without being negative. Click apply. We're gonna come up here. The ride heights still look good. Always double check all your ride heights and stuff to make sure they're staying where you want them to stay. You might want to drop that one just a tickle. Forty nine fifty nine, forty nine eighty one, that's close enough, that's good enough, because we're gonna go back and readjust that later. Forty seven or forty eight seventy five. Forty-seven eighty-one, forty-six, forty-seven oh five, forty-seven thirty-three, forty-six forty, forty-nine. Uh, drop down. That one's up a little higher than we want. There we go. We're at least now got everything kind of where we want it. We want our front right heights to be about. 4.7-ish. Come on. Stay put, you son of a bitch. <laughs> 4.7. Alright, so we're looking good there. Zero out your length slack, always, if you've made changes. 
to the right height and stuff. Don't have your link slack negative. Okay, now that we got that applied, let's go ahead and attach our bar. Now we've got our baseline basically thrown together here. Now we need to set our offset. So set your offset to zero, click apply. Make sure our toe in is basically even. I got one 30 seconds toe in on the both front wheels and uh, I've got zero toe on the rear. Make sure our cambers are still right, which they are, of course, changed. And of course that changes our caster. As you're building these setups, you're going to feel like you're playing a whack-a-mole because you're going to be constantly changing everything. Zero off the preload. Right heights, 47s. 49s, 49s. Casters, 10 and 8, which we want. Toe, 130 seconds. Rear toe and rear cambers look, everything looks happy. Our pre rear preload pre is in good shape. Make sure we remember to, also here's at the time, this is the time to set your steering ratio. Set it to whatever you usually run or feel comfortable with at what uh, larger tracks like Pocono or whatever size track you're running at. I am a big fan of 12 to one. This, one. this is the one I always go to pretty much everywhere except for like Martinsville or Richmond or Wilkesboro or the, or the little short tracks. And then set your steering offset to zero to start with. Make sure everything's passing. Click done. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna right now go out, make sure that our telemetry folder for iRacing is empty. And to get to our telemetry folder, I just, mine's already got a short, a quick access on it. So I click on telemetry, make sure that folder is completely empty. If you have telemetry files that you wanna save for, for reference or whatever, copy those into a new folder on your hard drive somewhere. Because it's imperative, it makes life much easier when you're building setups doing this stuff. If you keep that telemetry folder empty and only have the telemetry file in there for whatever you're checking or testing. Now that we got that ready to go, let's go ahead and click test. And we're gonna go out and we're gonna drive about two laps with our telemetry on. So turn on your telemetry. Hopefully you have a button map to it. And we're gonna go out and we're gonna turn two laps. That way we can get some steering angle information so we can set our offset. Once I turn the truck on. And one thing to kind of pay attention to and note when you're doing this first couple laps that you're running, if you feel any bumps in the steering, as you're going around the track, kind of take note of where they are at, they're at on the racetrack if you can. And how severe they feel. If they're really making your wheel jump or jerk, kind of keep that in mind and make a mental note of it because we'll have to correct that later at some point and we're going to use shocks to do that. And we'll deal with those when we get to our shock setting. And the truck, generally with the baseline setup we have on it, you should be able to drive it around the track pretty good. And we're gonna come around the turn three here, since I, Pocono don't have a turn four. And we're gonna drive as close to the wall as we can while holding the car as straight as possible. Without hitting the wall, preferably. Drive all the way down to the end of the straight. Go into the corner, maybe trail break a little bit. Come off the corner if you can, don't hit the wall, like I just about did. Run right along the wall. Again, try to avoid hitting it if you can. Come through the tunnel turn.
Now your steering offset's probably going to be all goofy looking. Mine's actually pretty close as it right now, but if you're on a different track other than Pocono, it might be all wonky. But just hold the truck as straight as you can down the straightaway, as close to the wall as you can. 58.31. We'll do one more lap just to make sure we got a good clean one in. Because whenever you're doing stuff with telemetry, if you hit the wall, you're probably going to have to throw that telemetry file out because the telemetry data will be skewed because of the wall hit. That's very important to keep in mind. So try to run your runs when you're taking telemetry as cleanly as possible. Even if you got to slow down a little bit to do it. Turn three, go down the back straight or the front straight, right up against the wall, and try to ride, ride the wall as straight as possible. All right, we should now have enough information to set our offset. So, what we're going to do is we just run three laps, we're going to just come back here onto the back straight. Before we actually stop, we're going to turn off our telemetry and we're going to come to a stop on the, on the straightaway. This comer brings to a complete stop. Now that we're stopped, we're going to go to the garage or reset back to the pits, go into the garage. And I like to pull my garage up so I've got all this stuff ready to go when I'm ready to look at my telemetry. We're going to pull up our... We're going to pull up our MoTeC Pull it over here so you guys can see. And on this workbook that I have, the new workbook that I'm going to be uploading that's updated should have also all this stuff. So we're going to open our log file. We're going to open up our telemetry file. And we're going to come up here to the little click down, drop down. And we're going to come down to steering. Click that. And you're going to see this, a picture of the track here with a little red icon in the middle. This, this is your truck. And then, of course, we got our steering wheel. And the thing that we're going to really be paying attention to the most is this number right here, steering wheel angle. Now, what I want to do is I want to drag this little cursor all the way to the exit of turn three. Or turn, well, it says there is turn four. And then we're going to come up here, we're going to click right here, and we're going to choose 0 .5, per, 0 0.5 times, which means it's going to run at half speed. This way, we can, these numbers ain't gonna change all that fast, so we kinda get a real good idea what number is popping up. We're gonna come here, click this little play button, and we're gonna watch the steering angle as it comes down the front straight. Right now we're six, seven, eight, nine, eight, nine, ten, nine, eight, kinda keep an eye on where you're at on the track. Nine, eight, seven, eight, Seven, eight, seven, eight, nine, and just for shit, this thing gives us a dragger back here a little bit further. And right here, it looks like we could probably get by with either seven or eight. We'll go ahead and click our stop button. Close out the telemetry file because we're done with it for the moment. Minimize MoTeC. We're going to come up here and we're going to set this to 8. I'm going to apply it. I'm going here into um, make sure that's gone. And then we're going to go and ahead and delete our telemetry file that we just did. Because at this point we're done with that specific telemetry file. Now what we're going to do is we're going to minimize MoTeC. We have our uh, offset set and all of our baseline set. Now we're going to go ahead, click done. We're going to go out and we're going to drive one or two more laps with telemetry running. Because what we're doing now is we're going to verify that our wheel is centered on the straightaway. 
and our offset is correct. And while at the same time we're doing that, we're going to be recording telemetry data to make sure that our right, or record our right height data, because we want to make sure that nothing on the truck is hitting the ground. We don't want to have the splitter hitting the ground, and we don't want the rear side skirts to be hitting the ground. So that's what we're doing right now, is just making sure that there is nothing hitting the ground. Because if we have anything hitting the ground, that's going to mess with our setup and make it really hard to troubleshoot and tune problems. Now I'm going to have to take another lap because I hit the wall and skewed my data. So you don't hit the wall if you can possibly help it. So that first lap doesn't count. The data in that lap is going to be worthless. So we're going to drive down the straightaway here. Make sure that our wheel is centered, and mine is. Mine's nice and centered, just how I want it. And we're going to roll through the corner here. And I don't really feel any bumps, which is kind of surprising. This track is bumpy. But the base spring pack or shock package we've thrown on this thing for building our setup around actually probably is pretty good for bumps. overlay that tells me what lap I'm on for certain I am now on lap four now lap four was a clean lap so there you go good job this should be a good good lap don't hit the wall don't hit the wall don't hit the wall Whatever you do, don't hit the wall. Now on the back straight here, we're going to shut off telemetry and just come to a stop. Now if you hit the wall, it don't matter. <laughs> All right, now that we're stopped, we're going to go ahead and pull up our MoTeC again. This time we're going to come up here to the steering. We're going to come down to where it says arrow. Click on that. Open our log file. And we're going to look at the traces here under the side skirts tab. And what we're looking for is to make sure that our rear skirts aren't below the track surface or a negative number. And right now our left rear skirt is showing a negative number. It's seven hundredths of an inch under. So what I'm in my right side is actually half an inch up. So what I need to do now, I'm going to come over and I'm going to look at my splitter to make sure it's not dragging. And it's actually not on the ground, which is a good thing. It's not actually hitting the ground, but it is a bit high, but we're not going to worry about that right now. So since my side skirts for my truck on the left side are a little bit low and could be causing damage, I'm going to minimize that, jump back to the garage, and I'm going to go to the rear ride height, and I'm going to go up on the rear ride height, right, 4.7 right now, or 4.9 right now, I'm going to go up one click on each side. Click apply, done. Close our log file, delete our telemetry files, like that, go out and run another two more laps, and then recheck to make sure that our side skirts and splitter and whatnot aren't hitting the ground. <coughs> turn on telemetry, Whoop. don't forget to turn on your telemetry when you're going out to test. I do that all the damn time and it frustrates the hell out of me when I get in to MoTeC go to open a telemetry log and there's, log and there's nothing in there. This is off. Because i got to go back out and run the whole damn run all over again, especially if I'm doing a long run set. Like for checking like um, ride heights over the long run. 
and making sure my splitter isn't dropping down on me as I go around the racetrack and it burns fuel off because as you burn fuel off your ride heights will change because you're losing all that fuel weight and as that front end drops or that back end drops down it'll bring the front end down and it could bring the splitter in contact with the racetrack at the end of a fuel run so you always want to check that and I'll go over that in more detail when we get to setting ride heights and actually setting our arrow Turn one more. We just turned one of our first laps. Two laps. We're on the back straight, we'll do like we did the first time. We'll turn off telemetry on the back stretch and just come to a stop and reset to the pits. Now I did hear the splitter hit as we come down through there and I got close to the apron and on the apron. So let's turn off our telemetry. Since we know that we did hear something scrape right there as we're going into the corner, we'll be, we might see the splitter be too low your telemetry is off and I don't see the indicator so let's go over to MoTeC open it up we're still a little bit too low on the left side so we're going to go up another click so let's go back out to the uh, garage up one more click on each side on the rear apply it click done go back to Motec close out our current log delete the logs minimize that go back out telemetry on two more laps the most important reason for doing this like I said we got to make sure that nothing is dragging as we're building our setup because if anything's hitting the ground or dragging it's going to affect our setup and we're going to get a shit setup If the front splitter is dragging on the ground, it'll make the car tight and you'll do everything you can to loosen it up and it won't work. Same thing with the rear skirts hitting the track. If the rear skirts are bottoming out and hitting the racetrack, it can make the thing real tight, burn the front tires off, and nothing you do fixes it. And you'll be slow and burn tires even though you're driving it. Even though you're slow, you're gonna burn the tires off. So we got to make damn sure before we start doing anything to major to our setup or really working on our setup that we have a good platform in place where nothing is hitting the ground. Again, run clean. Don't hit the wall. If you hit the wall, you got to scrap that lap. But if you do hit the log, just keep going and just remember that if you hit on a lap one, the first lap in low tech, you're going to have to ignore that lap data and just move on to the next clean lap that you have. But the good thing about this baseline setup is you should be able to drive it around without hitting, hitting the wall or anything. Generally. Might have to slow down a little bit, trail break the corner, but you should be able to get it around the racetrack. As for a baseline setup to get started, this thing actually don't drive that bad, really. 
Unfortunately, it's, 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 it's not going to be very fast because it's not all optimized and dialed in the way it needs to be. None of the arrows set, the weight balance ain't set right. It's probably going to burn tires like crazy. But right now we're just concerned about being able to get around the racetrack cleanly so that we can get the data we need to determine if we're ready to continue with our setup. And we should have enough data now. We'll cross the start finish line and we'll turn off the leather tree and stop. Now when you're Green doing miles. recording telemetry for setting your ride heights and arrow, I never drive it back to the pits. I always go past the start finish line or get onto the back straight or someplace where I can stop and turn telemetry off in the middle of, of the track somewhere so that I record the data from the point where I last crossed the start finish line up until I turn off the telemetry. All right, so now we got our telemetry recorded. Let's go into our MoTeC and see if we get the, got our bottoming out problem fixed. And it still is too damn low. Holy crap. How bad is it? A tenth of an inch. All right, so we're gonna have to get a little more radical with raising up of the rear, rear right height because we're not coming up high enough, quickly enough. So let's go back to the garage. This time we're gonna go up to 5.1. Reset our cameras because they did change. At least the left, right side did. The left side stayed where it's supposed to. We have no preload. Cameras all look to be happy. Rear preload looks to be happy. Well, actually, we can set the preload right there because that's that one foot pound. It, look, now it's negative. So let's go up one just to make sure that's positive. All right, 5.1. We now should be able to get around the racetrack without the ass end bottoming out. So let's make sure that our log file is off. It won't let you delete the logs if that's open. Delete that. Let's go out couple more laps just to make sure everything is not dragging make sure we don't have a make sure our skirts are not on the ground come on a tree on don't forget now since this is a test session we don't really have to worry about blend line because we're not going to get the black flag but if you're in a open session in a race lobby or in the race and shit like that, of course you're gonna have to follow a blood line and fit, fit road speed limits and everything like that. <coughs> this is one of the reasons I don't build setups in open, in open practice lobbies. Because it takes goddamn long to get off fucking pet road otherwise. And these setups are gonna take long enough as it is to build without wasting time, just making sure you don't get a speeding penalty coming off pet road. Or or have to worry about the damn blend line. And screw it up, get a black flag, and have to go back and reset to the pits, clear the flag, and start over again with your setup, which will usually require you having to turn off your telemetry, in most cases, clearing out your telemetry data folder, and then restarting the run. And all that does is just waste time. Start finish line. 
At this point, we're just still working on getting our ride height set so that we're not dragging on the ground and that kind of thing. So we're not too worried about our lap times or fuel or lap times or tire wear at this particular point. So let's go back to Motec and see if we got the thing fixed or if we're still too damn low. All right, so now we're 12 hundredths above the track on the left rear, 72 on the right side. So the right side is actually higher than I'd like to actually have it be, but for now it's going to be fine. So that's good. So let's check the verifier splitter is good and is on both the left and right sides. So we're good to go there so we can unload that telemetry. Delete the telemetry file because we don't need that for the moment. And I'm going to go ahead and close out of MoTeC because for now I'm done with I don't need MoTeC no more. The next thing we're going to do is basically where we're at right now is we're at the point where we're setting our we got our caster set. Now the way to adjust caster to get it dialed in the way exa exactly the way you want it. When you're out there on the racetrack and you're driving around, you're getting ready to turn into the corner with this baseline setup. If the, you turn the wheel and the thing feels like it's diving down to the infield, you have too much caster split. Well, if it's not turning enough, you don't have enough caster split. And the way to adjust your caster split is in the garage. Since I have 10 degrees on the right front right now and 8 on the left front, I have two degrees of caster split and what that's going to do is it's going to make the truck pull in the direction of the side of the truck that has the lower caster setting. In this case it's going to be the left side. And the higher that split number is, right now we have two, so if I had 10 and a 7 for example that would be a 3 degree split, it would make that pulling to the left much more dramatic. So the higher your split number, the more dramatic it's going to be. So and when you adjust your split, so if it's di diving too hard, you need to re you need to increase or decrease the split. So like if you had it 7 and 10, you'd have 3 and it'd be diving too hard. You'd need to go up to like an 8 and get it down to get the split down to a 2. When you adjust your split, you always adjust it with the left side caster. You don't touch the right side. Once you got the right side set to 10 or the highest number you you're going to go with leave the right front alone and adjust just the left side now if it's diving in is because the splits too high what we're going to do is we're going to raise up the left side caster to bring it closer to the right side to make that split number get smaller because remember it's the right side minus the left side now that we got a caster set or you should have your caster set at this point now based on the information I opened up MoTeC and I didn't need to. We're going to go in here and we're going to record the data that we've just dealt with in our setup log. So our steering ratio, 12 to 1. Our steering offset should be plus 8, if I remember right. Since I can't remember, i got to go back and look. So it's got yeah, plus 8. And our caster on mine is negative, or, pot, or it's going to be 8 on this side, 8 on the left side, 10 on the right side. That takes care of our caster settings. And now we're ready to go ahead and save what we have right now. We're going to save as, actually we'll hold off on saving it because we got to still verify that our cambers are set right. So make sure we're set to where we want to be. We're, okay, our cambers are set, our casters are good, our ride heights are good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go out and we're going to do a 20 lap run 
to get some wear on the tires so we can see how our tires are wearing to see what our casters, if our camber setting is set right or not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put you guys on a brief pause, go out, run 20 laps, and I'll be back in just a moment. For you guys, it'll be a couple of seconds. Okay, I'm back from my 20 lap run. <coughs> for you guys, it was probably just a couple of seconds. For me, it's, I've been basically driving for the last 20 minutes because this a lap here is 20 is a minute length and 20 laps 20 minutes so basically what we do is after we come back in the, after we run our 20 lap run is we're going to look at our tire wear and we're going to note that up here in our our log so we're going to start with the right front tire for run one Pull this in here. I might have to drop this or shrink this down a little bit so we can still see everything. So we're going to start with the right front tire for run one. And our inside is 75%. Our middle is also 75%. Our outside is 78%. <coughs> Then we'll look at our right rear. Scrolling that down. So our right rear inside is 94% it looks like. The middle is also 94%. And the outside edge is 95%. Now we're going to look at our right or left rear. Our inside is on the on the left rear is going to be 96. Middle is 95. Outside is 95. <coughs> Now the reason I like using a spreadsheet is because it allows me to compare over runs whether I'm correcting my if my camber is getting corrected or not as I'm making changes to the camber because I do it looks like I do have to do a little bit of adjustment on it because it's not quite right. So what I'm going to do for the moment I'm just going to slide this out of the way so you can see. Go back to our tires now our camber on our right front is a little off it's a little bit it needs to go a little bit more positive on the right front and the reason and this is how i've determined that i'm looking at the wear i want to see even wear across this tire i want all three of these numbers to be exactly the same on the right front tire as well as the right rear tire and the left rear tire i want those numbers to all be the same because that's going to tell me that my uh, t tire wear is even across the tread face and my camber is set properly and the tire is setting flat on the track. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go in and it looks like we need to put a little more wear on the outside edge. So for the right front we're going to come down and it looks like it's got to drop quite a bit so we're going to come down to 2.3 on the right front. Going back to the looking at the right rear, we're at 94, 94, 95. So we got to go just a tickle more positive on the right rear, which is at 1.5. So we'll drop that down to a 1.4. Click apply. And the left rear has got a little bit, needs to be a little bit more negative because it's a it's got a little bit it's not wearing enough on the inside edge for my liking <coughs> so I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna make this lefter a slightly bit more negative so I'm gonna drop this down to a one the positive 1.4 all right now that that's all set we pretty much got 
our cameras are adjusted, so we're going to click done. <coughs> and then we need to go out and run another 20 lap run again. And then come back in and check our tire wear. So I'll do that here in just a second. And one thing I like to do, just to make sure that I'm doing the same number of laps each time into driving, and to make sure you're driving the truck around the track as consistently and as close to race speed as possible without wrecking the thing. I like to close out of iRacing. And then as soon as it comes back up, click the test drive button again on the right side there and reload a fresh test session because that will re reset your lap counter and your lap times. Now for adjusting camber and setting your alignment and stuff like that, we don't really need to worry about uh, lap times all that much because all we're doing is just adjusting our alignment to get our tire wear balanced out. So as this loads up, I'm going to go out and run another 20 lap run. So I'll put you guys on a brief talk, pause so you don't have to sit there and watch me driving for 20 minutes because that would just be boring as hell. So I'm going to put you guys on a brief, brief pause and I'll come back after I run my next 20 lap run. Okay, it's now 20 laps later and for me 20 minutes later but for you just a couple of, a couple of seconds. <coughs> so basically where we're at right now is I just went out and made my next my second 20 lap run after doing my adjustments and I'm looking at my tire wear now and basically I'm going to go ahead and throw this up onto the Excel spreadsheet and record my tire wear information so this would be the second run or third third run rather second run actually actually so be the one right after the first one we did i need to probably go through there and change my order number ordering number of my runs here so so on the right front we were 70 we got 78 78 so inside is 78 middle is 78 <coughs> outside is 80 Move this kind of out of the way a little bit more. We go down to the right rear, and we have 95, 95, 95. Both sides at 95. Now we're going to look at the right. Rear. That was a whoop. I did, did, did that backwards. This should be the left rear, which is 96. 96. got that all dialed in there and recorded. I'm going to pull this up so we can see it a little bit better. Now what I'm seeing here is it looks like my right front camber is now set right. I've got 95, 96, 95, 95. And then the left or left rear, 96, 96, 96. And then our right front, 78, 78, 78, 80. So basically what we're aiming for here is for all these percentage numbers to be basically the same across the tire's tread base. There is one exception, however, to that rule. And it would be, on this case, the right front, where we got 78, 78, and then 80. What this 80 here it actually means is it's probably not so much a camber problem, but an air pressure problem. And what's happening is our right front or right front tire, the air pressure is a little bit too low, and it's causing the wear in the middle to not be high enough because that inside, that middle section of the tire 
this cupped up and they're not actually touching the track because air pressure is not high enough. But when you're setting your cambers, your basic goal is to get your tire wear across the tread base of the tire as even as absolutely possible. Because it, when it comes to traction, it's all about surface area. The more of the tire tread you can have in contact with the track, and having the tire tread laying flat on the track, the more grip you're going to get and the more tire life you're going to get. So that's the primary reason for getting these all set the way we do right now. Now for you guys, if you're following along with me, you guys have just done two 20 minute runs on this track since this track is gigantic, And it would be a probably not a bad idea just to take a break from the building for a little bit. Go watch a little television, grab a bite to eat, take a nap, something like that because you don't want to sit here and do, just keep building and building and building and building non-stop in one sitting because these setups do take a long time to build and from what I can see right now just looking at my uh, little clock here on my OBS for my on-screen recording this video alone is uh, just a little over an hour long it's about only 10 minutes but keep in mind I paused it during my 20 minute runs, 20 lap runs, so in reality I'm probably closer to almost two hours into this setup already, just me building it here off camera, the part of it I'm doing off camera which is basically the testing. So what we want to go ahead and do here is since we pretty much have our cameras set and our front alignment is all set. Go ahead and record our camera settings. We'll pull this out of the way and go back up to the garage. We're going to record our right front camera. As soon as I get my screen back up here. So my right front camera right now is at negative 2.3 like so left front camera like I said earlier we ain't worrying about that because the left front don't do nothing really to speak of of any importance anyway our left rear camera it is actually sitting right now at where the hell did it go? That's left front. It's probably hiding down here a little bit lower. Yeah, it's a positive one point four. <coughs> Left rear is positive 1.4 and our right rear is at negative 1.4. There, now it's set with a plus. <coughs> the right rear is at minus 1.4. So we got a, our camber settings all recorded. We've got our caster settings recorded. So basically, and we've got all our, our tire wear 
as we adjusted our cameras all recorded so that we can make a decision on what we need to do now I've got this set up to where you can do multiple runs and I should fix that right now while I'm thinking about it for, don't, so I don't forget so basically we gotta get rid of that one come down here to the two make that a one come down to the three make that a two a three a four Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So basically, we had to reorder my numbers here for the run number. So basically, you just sit there for each run. You can actually go back and look to see how much of camber change is affecting your tire wear, whether you're moving in the right direction and whether you need to keep going or if you finally got it basically where, where you need it to be <coughs> in my case it looks like everything is pretty good the only exception I mentioned is the right front where it goes to 80 and then 78 like that and then 80 in the middle since it's pretty even across three quarters of the t tire it basically is telling me that I just need to adjust my, t my tire pressures for that particular tire and that will be covered in another another video but for right now we're just going to go ahead minimize that and we're going to come down here to my setup or to save as we're going to save this setup come down to Pocono which is our next race and we're going to save this as race one race dash one which is going to be a way of indicating what tab we're in in our spreadsheet we're on tab one we've got our data entered in here so we're going to go ahead and save this file save as browse and we're already in our setup folder truck main season for 2024 the Pocono folder and we're going to go ahead and save this file and lastly if I want to say this overwrite it I'm going to choose yes and this will cover this particular part of the video <laughs> this is going to be a multiple part video there's going to be several parts as we go through and build this setup and each of these tabs at the bottom here is going to have its own video associated with it so that it will be a lot easier for those of you who wish to learn to build a setup in real time and want to follow along with the video with the setup in iRacing and try to actually build one as you watch this video. Breaking them up into multiple sections will make that a lot easier. Just remember to save your settings as you move from video to vi or save your setup as you move from video to video. Just in case something goes wrong you can revert back to where you were at the end of the previous video so to recap we have gone through and we have learned in this video how to build our baseline setup as well as how to have a brief beginner crash course in reading tire wear and how to read our tires to determine if our camber is set properly there's other things I can learn from this tire wear that I'm seeing here but that's a topic for another for another video. In the meantime, I did, almost forgot. I forgot to put in my toe. Was it going to be positive one thirty two? Left front's going to be positive one thirty two. Right front's going to be positive 132. Come down to our back here. And the, zero, the rear is at zero. So we'll just go ahead and put zeros in there. Resave our spreadsheet all right 
Well, now that, that we got that part to that to the conclusion of this video, stick around because we'll be coming back for part two, where we go into start working with our air pressures to get those set and ready to go. In that video, that one probably won't be a real real long one, but it will probably take a few minutes to get our air pressure set, and then we'll move on from there to like our spring package video. Then we'll do our front and a roll bar video, our nose weight video, cross weight video, spring package video, and all the other videos that go along with the setup process. So in the meantime, thanks for watching. We'll catch you all in the next one. And if you like this video, remember to like, subscribe, and all of that good stuff. Catch you later.